beautiful people how are you doing how have you been are you still watching and subscribing and also do not forget to hit that notification bell to get notified every time we upload a new video i'm your girl linda kenyita and this is dog tv kenya the best documentary channel for all dog lovers and today i'm somewhere visiting this young gentleman he's a first time dog owner with several dogs first time dog owner who's keeping rotis yes of all the dog breeds a first time dog owner can keep and without further ado i'm going to let him introduce himself and also introduce his kennel and uh we can chat a little bit more about him and his love of dogs okay keep watching keep subscribing and do not forget to hit the notification bell Isaac, welcome to our show. I'm going to hand over the mic to you so that you can introduce yourself and the name of your kennel. Okay, hi guys. My name is Isaac from Kishami Rotwilas, Kenya. Uh, here at Kawaskari, uh, along Thika Road. I started a passion for dog a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And to be specific, Rotwilas. Mm -hmm. I love uh, big breeds. Mm -hmm. uh, Basically, but I don't hate small breeds, mm -hmm. but I start. I decided to start with big breeds first mm -hmm. uh, for me now to be able to control the small breeds because I find big breeds being difficult to control. Yeah, but yeah. now mm -hmm. uh, it's easy okay. for me. That will make it automatically for maybe small breeds. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, I want you to take me on your journey of loving dogs. Have you always loved jo dogs or is it something that you've just um, come across as you growing up? Wow. Okay. I'll take you back to the village. Okay. I grew up in a village. Okay. In the village. Uh, and I used to stay with my shosh. Mm -hmm. I was a shoshos guy since I'm the first mm -hmm. grandson. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was always close to shosh. Uh, and she, she used to keep many mongrel. Then I'm from a herding community. I grew up in the Maasai land. So we used to have uh, more than 10 mongrels. Mm -hmm. And I used to herd with uh, a few of them. Mm -hmm. So as I said, she used to keep many dogs. Mm -hmm. And I had my favorite aggressive ones because mm -hmm. I used to hunt with them. Mm -hmm. I always go to the forest and uh, uh, try to catch a few antelopes here and there. And mm -hmm. I always come home mm -hmm. with something. Mm -hmm. And at times, uh, we, also, we also used to herd with uh, others. Mm -hmm. Dogs are good herders. Mm -hmm. And she, she used to talk to her mongrels. Mm -hmm. We used to feed them. Uh, and the sad thing and maybe motivating side, when we lose one of uh, our dogs, we used to do burial, a real burial, just like any other burial. Mm -hmm now but without a coffin <laughs> we, we do a real burial we do real graves we moon mm -hmm. just like members of the family uh, now back to Nairobi mm -hmm. when I came to Nairobi I was really enthusiastic uh, about owning dogs mm -hmm. uh, but the challenge was now where to keep them because I was living in an apartment mm -hmm. So I was always been driven to live in a place where I can keep dogs for me now to feel like a complete person who's living. Mm -hmm. So immediately I found somewhere now to call a home or a place to keep dogs. Mm -hmm. The first thing was after getting my beds and my belonging inside <laughs> that house mm -hmm. before i bought my first padlock i bought my first dog <laughs> mm -hmm. so i can say my dogs came with uh, okay every dog has a story mm -hmm. of how i acquired my dogs mm -hmm. i acquired my dogs as pets and also as investment mm -hmm. so that's how i found myself owning first dog second dog mm -hmm. And then the whole pack. Okay. Give me a story of your first dog. Uh, why did you get the first dog and how did you get it? And why a roti? Like you did your research and you decided uh, I'm going to take a roti. Why specifically did you decide on getting the rotis? We had a mzungu neighbor uh, in the village who had big dogs. Mm -hmm. And they, they were really intimidating. <laughs> so I wanted to own those big dogs. So uh, that's when I learned that there are different types of dog, different breeds, I mean, of dogs. Then, uh, since I was a gym person, I found myself uh, loving big, uh, big breeds. So I researched about dogs, because the common dogs people know around, and maybe in Kenya, are German Shepherds. 
So people, many people know German Shepherds. Even those people who don't know dogs, when they visit me, they tell me, "Hey, we call German Shepherd." Mingi na kaji so. Many people don't know different types or more different breeds of dogs. So as well, as I was researching intelligence, obedience, aggressiveness of a dog, I was caught by a Rottweiler's character. So generally, I went for Rotties because they matched my my type. I like uh, okay less to groom, but that's not laziness. So I loved uh, Rottweilers. Because they are very, they also very intelligent. So I decided to go for rotis. When I was trying to get my first uh, rotwila, I was very shocked to be told the, about the budget and the price. I thought dogs are ten thousand, five thousand. <laughs> I can get a dog with fifteen k. <laughs> but man, rotwilas are they are worth their breed. They are expensive, but not expensive. Because the other big, okay, the other dogs <laughs> which are much expensive, expensive, more expensive, even a million. So I had a meeting with myself and said, hey, I'm going to spend this much for a dog, and uh, then I must, I must get it back as an investment, as much as I must have that dog. And then I decided I'll have to start with a female. But I didn't have time to save because I wanted a dog immediately. But lucky enough, mm -hmm. I got a gig uh, with, a com with a certain company. Mm -hmm. And they paid me some amount. It was uh, during COVID. So I said, I'll buy a female Rotwila, a mature one, mm -hmm. uh, that will give me many puppies. And I will assume or maybe say, it's this gig that has bought me all these dogs. Mm -hmm. It will be equivalent to them buying me all those puppies. So I bought my first uh, female roti, mm -hmm. and uh, lucky enough, or maybe I was blessed to to get a pregnant one by ten. I got it from a friend, uh, expecting as it was. Okay, it was expecting by then. So that was my first dog, and within a month and a half. It gave me eight puppies, and before the puppies even uh, got their first uh, vaccination, mm -hmm. in another job that I also do, mm -hmm. <laughs> I did a sale. Okay, instead of him paying me cash, he's also a dog lover. He owned many GSDs, mm -hmm. and I visited him, and I loved one of his GSDs, mm -hmm. and he told me. I told him, why can't you give me one puppy instead of paying me? Mm -hmm. And he said, well, since you also have a Rottweilers and puppies, I would love to own one. Mm -hmm. So I'll pay you using this puppy mm -hmm. and I'll follow you back mm -hmm. later mm -hmm. You and buy a puppy from you because mm -hmm. I would love to own a Rottweiler. Mm -hmm. So I acquired my second uh, dog, mm -hmm. which is a GSD. Mm -hmm. That is because of pressure from my friends and partner they also the old people are telling me do you have german shepherds do you have german shepherds so uh other people are also discouraging me that you are keeping a rotwila okay there are many myths around about rotwilas which i don't think it's true they eat the owners they are very aggressive it, you will uh, have them according to how you train them to be so uh, because of those meat, I was uh, thinking on, should I own a, a German Shepherd or not? But when I visited the guy, he had the best GSDs. So I, I was attached by one, and that's how I got my second dog. The third dog was, okay, okay, that's not my second dog. <laughs> because my first dog was the pregnant one. It gave me puppies, which all puppies now are my second dogs. And then I got the second one, now the GSD. I don't know if it's the second or the ninth. Uh, and then after some times, I now, okay, because I, I was researching about dogs, mm -hmm. and I learned that I can't keep the same litter mm -hmm. and breed them. Mm -hmm. So you have to keep the lines. Mm -hmm. So I decided to rehome half of my puppies mm -hmm. for me now to add other litters from different parents. Mm -hmm. 
So I rehomed almost four mm-hmm. where, where, while they were still young. Mm-hmm. And I got eight puppies from a neighbor who had a, a litter and he, the, the, the neighbor was rehoming all of them. Mm-hmm. He was just a person in a neighbor here who doesn't breed. breed. Mm-hmm. He just wants dog for security. Mm-hmm. So Haku and Ataka, the puppies. So that's how I acquired many puppies. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are other litters now. Mm-hmm. So I ended up with eight puppies from a different mother, different fathers, mm-hmm. plus my four Rottweilers now. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's how now I got my second pack mm-hmm. of dogs. Mm-hmm. Uh, now I stay with those dogs for uh, around five months. Now I learned different traits and tricks and lessons with dogs. Every dog has different character, temperament. Mm-hmm. Like for for those uh, for that litter, these, they, they were docked. Mm-hmm. Uh, they are very aggressive temperament. They they are they have high temperament, destructive. They are real rottweilers now energetic playful i had to buy toys every now and then balls they are no longer here because mm-hmm. they were destroying because i was buying light toys mm-hmm. my shoes my clothes sugar canes around <laughs> okay they were missing short okay they were messy so uh people now started noticing me around so everyone who wants to who are we or your home is dog? Mm-hmm. Uh, they used to look for me like, do you want this uh, type of breed? Mm-hmm. And I also had uh, breeders mm-hmm. whom I used to share feed with. Mm-hmm. So as I was sharing feed with uh, other breeders, mm-hmm. there is a friend of mine called Sam mm-hmm. around uh, around here. Mm-hmm. He had uh, Great Dance and few other dogs. And I, f- I uh, okay when I visited him, mm-hmm. I got I saw I saw a big rottweiler there. Mm-hmm. There were two dogs a roti and a gsd which was a female mm-hmm. a long coat just like my male one so i said why can't i get both of them mm-hmm. so that my long coat gsd which is a male mm-hmm. uh, i'll have to breed it with uh, this female now mm-hmm. so i told the guy i will not only take the roti but i'll rehome both mm-hmm. so that's how i acquired my last uh, members mm-hmm. the two gsds now now, when you, you talked about food, what do you generally feed your dogs? Uh, because of my schedule, I have three diets. Uh, one is, uh, okay, because I have to cook for them, uh, to maybe reduce worms and keep them healthy. So when I'm busy, uh, okay, I feed them dry food. That is when I'm not able to cook. That's the day they'll take dry food. Uh, when I'm around and maybe have time to cook, I do rice and beef, and sometimes uh, switch with chicken feet and chicken head. So I feed them chicken heads and chicken feet, and uh, change it with uh, dry food sometimes, and then beef and rice. Yes. But I'm also trying to uh, do them fruits and vegetables mm-hmm. in between. Someday I give them bananas, cab- I, I add cabbages because they have to be balanced. Because also I learned that dog needs fruit and vegetables mm-hmm. just as human being. I learned when the ma- mango season was mm-hmm. or like was on, mm-hmm. they are the ones who ate, I mean, <laughs> almost all the mangoes. When I woke up, <laughs> I found, I, I always find every dog at her or his corner with a mango so i used to collect mango pills mm-hmm. every day mm-hmm. yeah dogs do eat fruits um in the village during the avocado season stray dogs never go hungry because they know at the farms there are avocados so in other words when you hear people calling avocado magunagite <laughs> do you call avocados magunagite where you come from kwetu avocados inaitwa magunagite because during the avocado seasons, dogs never go hungry. It doesn't matter whether they have homes or not. Now, let me ask you a question. Uh, one of the things that uh, usually people are usually afraid of, it's health challenges that comes with dogs and maybe vet bills. So, so far, for the time that you've kept dogs, have you had any health challenges? 
uh, lucky enough i was able to research before i acquired my dogs so i have a vet who is my neighbor and my friend uh, whom i seek his advice so first thing uh, he told me that i have to get a good dog well fully vaccinated with um, vaccinated vaccination card so i had to ensure that the dog that i'm getting is fully vaccinated uh well kept with somebody who is uh, a dog lover because you don't you will not just get a good dog from anyone because people keep dogs as dogs but other keep dogs as part of the family so you have to get your dog from somebody who value the dog uh, that will you'll be more sure that the dog is well kept uh, high immune so when i acquire my dog i make sure that it's healthy then from there i continue with the journey so even if it's not uh, sick i give my dog vitamins to be to uh, raise the immune system so like mine i have to give them vitamins every two weeks Okay, those are things that you do regularly. Vitamins and deworming. Deworming after three months, vitamins after every two weeks, uh, just for immune system. Isaac, one thing I'm noticing about your kennels is that it's clean and there is no poop inside. And, uh, you know, most of the time people are scared about poop and uh, smell. And here we are. These, um, we do not have any smell. We do not have any poop in the kennels. Are your dogs potty trained or how is it that we are in these clean not so smelly situation okay well, what i can tell you and uh, what i can say about the myth of uh, dog poop smelling and that i will say dogs are not dirty the people who keep dogs uh, make them dirty uh, about my kennels it's how you train your dogs because dogs are very organized they don't just mess anywhere unless if you allow them to do so or you corner them to do so. Uh, even the normal mongrels, you can't just find their poops everywhere. You will find them at the common places because uh, dogs love to keep their territory. You will find them peeing in a certain corner. So for mine, I, I put it trained. The one that I, I started uh, breeding from my first dog, my first puppies because now i don't lock my dogs in the kennel uh the whole day that means 24 7 because if you lock them now the whole day they'll have to poop in, in the kennel but now if you lock them inside the kennel maybe during the day and let them out at night then you have to potty train them that is to show them where to go to and in most cases dogs love or like or prefer to go to the toilet or put their poops uh, where it seems to look bushy so you have to have like a small garden somewhere or just a bushy area around your uh, around your compound then you train your dog and potty training is always easy that means if you lock your dog uh, maybe during the day when you let it out the first thing you're supposed to do is to take that dog to where it's supposed to do the business so so you take it to a corner you stay there because immediately the dogs get out it starts sniffing uh, showing that it's looking for where it left the poop uh, yesterday and immediately he, he sniffs or he gets the scent of where the poop was it does its business there so when you see the dog starts smelling around immediately after letting it out now you direct that dog to the place that you want it to do the business and stay there uh, for around maybe a few seconds and then immediately it finishes its business now you let the dogs uh, i mean the dog get uh, to i mean get free so if you do that repeatedly for like two three days then the following days or the rest of the days is only for you to open or let the dogs out and watch it or uh, direct that dog to that place without even you going there. It will automatically go, do the business and come back. So if you are not keeping your dog inside the kennel the whole day, uh, you, are letting it, uh, you are letting them out and in. So you just need to train them where to do the business and it will reduce the pressure of you cleaning the kennel, I mean cleaning the poops. You will only clean the normal dirt of which if you have a managed compound or maybe uh, dust free place it will also reduce the pressure of you cleaning the dog frequently 
Yes. Um, and now when you are acquiring the rotis, like you are one that rotis in a kula, they eat and they even eat the owners. How has you been your experience so far? Okay, people have different myths and me and myths about rotwellers, of which they say that rotwellers are very aggressive, of which they are. Uh, they eat their owners, they eat people. Uh, but what I have noticed and learned is it's not that rotwellers eat people or eat their owners. It's how you keep your dog. Every dog will eat anyone if it's wild. Uh, I mean, if it's kept wild. That is, if you just lock your door inside the kennel, throw the food inside, like you are keeping a wild animal. It's like a zoo. So you have to socialize that dog, train that dog to attack a threat, not to attack a threat. This is a friend. This is a pedestrian. This is your territory. So you have to train that dog. And dogs are very intelligent. They know what is a threat, what is not, who is a stranger, this is not a stranger, this is my owner, this is a friend. Like right now, you are all accepted here, they are quiet, yes. they trust you because they have seen and they have learned that you are not a threat. But you can't get inside here without me. I don't have a padlock, <laughs> but I know, I know that no one will get inside here without me or as a threat and get away with uh, uh, with it so dogs are not violent unless if you train them to be uh, naturally they are aggressive but what you need to do is control the aggressiveness attack when necessary not to attack anything uh, just to be controlling and uh, control your dog but naturally they are aggressive but you have to teach them socialization you have to socialize them yes Parting shots, maybe a little bit out of the experience that you've had so far, or and even just growing up, was you've had experience with dogs ever since you were a child. You grew up with dogs, and now here you are in your own home with dogs. Maybe a little bit of advice to dog lovers and people who are considering about acquiring dogs. What would you say? I will relate dogs with something like cars. You just don't acquire a dog because you love a dog. Dogs are very different. Uh, just like I can compare it with cars. They are off-road cars. They are low-profile cars. They are big cars. They are small cars to go to every road. So same case to dogs. Uh, when you want a dog, ask yourself, what type of a dog do I want? To perform which task or to accomplish what? Do I, do I need a pet? Do, do I need a security dog? Uh, what type of security, how explicit is my security? Because uh, for a German Shepherd, it's a guard dog. Uh, it's a security dog. Uh, it's an intelligent dog. But a Rottweiler is also the same. It's a guard dog, but it's a hunting dog. So you have to know the traits. It's a hunting dog, which means it hits. Uh, a hunter is not loud. A hunter is quiet to get the prey. But a guarding dog is to scare away a threat, to be loud for you to wake up. It's like a, a bell. So a German shepherd barks, scare away. It bites, yes. But for a Rottweiler, it's a hunting dog. It's a very powerful dog. So it, 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 would, it would love to catch that person, rattle the person down, tear uh, everything into pieces because a hunting dog is a quiet dog and it, it hits. It's very powerful, it's very aggressive, it's massive. It, uh, the, it, it, Rottweilers has the powerful jaws. So if you live in a very scary neighborhood whereby your security is not only focused on maybe people, it's also uh, insecure for maybe wild if you're experiencing wild animals, maybe the, uh, something like lions, cheetahs, then you have to keep the big breeds, the powerful breeds, the rotwillers, the boar bulls, because these breeds are very powerful. They fight lions, they fight cheetahs, they fight strong uh, threats. But for German shepherds, they are very aggressive also, very intelligent, but you can't compare the power of a German shepherd to rotwillers. They are not those muscular, powerful breeds. Uh, but for a Rottweiler, 
just as I've said, you need to be controlling. Because for you to control the powerful uh, uh, dog like that, you have to control. Yes. Whoa. So do your research before you get any dog that you want so that we do not have to give bad reps to the animals and yet the owners are the ones who never did their research. Okay, people, stop hating on the animals. I'm your girl, Linda Kenyitsa, and I've been chilling out with Isaac and his beautiful family of rotis. See the way they are chilled out there. Man, they are sleeping. How are you? They are not disturbed by my yapping, yapping around here. Okay. Let me introduce you from this first end. I will start here. Mm -hmm. Now this kennel, I have two friends. Mm -hmm. uh, I lock them randomly, mm -hmm. but coincidentally, this is my first dog mm -hmm. and my last one. <laughs> so this is my first family member. Mm -hmm. She's called Lizzie. Mm -hmm. She's expecting now. Mm -hmm. Uh, she was my first roti ever, uh, and then this is MJ, mm -hmm. uh, I acquired her, I can say I rescued her from a friend who abandoned, abandoned her, she was, uh, she, had, she, she had a good shape, keep quiet, <laughs> okay, I, I got her from a friend, and then here are my GSDs, uh, due to Due to public pressure, mm -hmm. I had to acquire <laughs> I had to acquire German shepherds, mm -hmm. of which I loved them, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, many people know about German shepherds only. They don't know other breeds. Okay, German shepherds are very common. So I got spicy uh, from a friend again. She is uh, eight months old. She's a puppy. Oh, she's a puppy. Yeah, she's a puppy, eight months old. And here is Bruno. Uh, Bruno was my second dog. Uh, he's a good guy, he's a good boy. I got him uh, at eight when he was eight months. And here is Coleman. Uh, this is the giant puppy from my other friend. I called him Coleman. Coleman is the biggest body, okay, he's an American bodybuilder. Eight times Mr. Olympia, so he's, he's huge. And this is Samantha. Uh, Samantha is from another litter. Uh, Hi, Samantha. She, yeah, she is Lizzie's puppy. Uh, I told you this is Coleman. Coleman is from another litter somewhere. The second litter that I got uh, from my neighbor. Uh, he is from a high temperament family. He's very aggressive. Uh, compared to Samantha, mm. who's very cool, social. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll keep, okay, I'll rehome uh, Coleman tomorrow. Somebody has already convinced me. Mm -hmm. And he loved the guy. Mm -hmm. He loved big breeds. Mm -hmm. And I'm giving him to a new home. Yeah, okay. okay, I'll take him, you to my bully guy, Jumia. As you can see, he, he is always bully. He's the biggest and food uh, first puppy for from Lizzie, mm -hmm. Jumia, Jumia. <laughs> Come on, sit, sit down. Good boy. Okay, I named him Jumia because of the company that gave me the, the job. And here is uh, Amber. Hi, Amber. Amber. Uh, Amber is. Shh. Keep quiet. Uh, Amber is that lady who loves attention. Uh, she's so attached. She's uh, more a pet than a security dog. She's so attached to people, but aggressive uh, while you try to bully her. And Jumia loves Amber because uh, Amber is always naggy when she tries to, to bully her. Okay, here is Sukta. <laughs> Sukuta. Okay, I, I gave a, a traditional name eh? from, uh, from my community. Shh. Okay, there is a. There is a stop, stop. Where is the treat? <laughs> come on, come on, come on, come on. 
sit down. So this is Sokta and, and Rooney. Shh, keep quiet. This is Rooney and Sokta. Shh. Uh, they are from the same mother, different litter. These are my second uh, dogs I acquired from my neighbors. They are six months old. And here I have Tesh and Nameless. I never named uh, this guy because I was prepared to rehome him. Uh, because I have many males, so I can't keep more than five males. Shh. Keep quiet. This will turn to be a bread eh? if you keep quiet. Shh. Keep quiet, keep quiet. By faith. Okay. <laughs> So Nameless is uh, very aggressive, and uh, Tesh is very uh, Tesh is very destructive. She's the one who uh, torn my shoes, my clothes, and everything. She loves toys, uh, and she's from a high temperament family. A different mother, same father to these other ones. Okay, the ones that are docked are from the same uh, family and very aggressive. Uh, so they need to be trained, well controlled, uh, and maybe you have to be controlling. So these are my packs of friends, and I'm intending to keep all of them unless you convince me. Uh, and in near future, I'll even add more. Okay. Yes. Let me ask you, so far in your journey, what are some of the challenges that you've come across? while keeping these dogs? Okay, before I owned uh, my first dog, I had to research. For me, okay, they are coming out, but they are socialized. <laughs> Let them walk around. Stop, Tesh, in, get in, go back. So I researched uh, for me to avoid the challenges, but all in all, at the end of the day, there are things that I never saw somewhere. So they hit me. For example, I was very prepared on feed, health, uh, I was up to date with my vaccines, but I never saw anyone uh, advising me uh, about kennels and maybe controlling them uh, to where you are going to keep them. For example, if you are going to keep two or three dogs, it's very obvious you can just have two or one kennel. But if you have many dogs, you have to control them. For example, when you have females and male, the dogs that you're going to breed with the others so you have to have male kennels female kennels mm. uh, if you have a friend's dog which will visit you you have to have a boarding uh, maybe kennel a free kennel mm -hmm. which has no dog for example mm -hmm. uh, you have okay you have to have uh, several r kennels mm -hmm. if you keeping many dogs cause you're going to have dog fights mm -hmm and unnecessary death for for dogs mm -hmm. yes yeah. kennels are, are, are my first stop <laughs> or my first challenges actually these kennels are very new and emergency kennels as you can see i have not even finished and i'm trying okay i'm also planning to give them their own compound for me to avoid the challenges yes Kama kawaida, I'm your girl Linda Kenyita and this is Dog TV Kenya, the best documentary channel for all dog lovers. Kama kawaida, subscribe, hit the notification bell to get notified every time we upload a new video. And also, if you'd like to partner with us, you can always send us an email at kenyadogtv at gmail.com or you can get in touch with us throughout our social media handles. Until the next one, see ya. What do you have to say about your, your new visitors?